All right, everybody, let's take a look here. So, real quick, a couple of weeks ago, before I was on medical leave uh, and all that stuff, there was a channel that we discovered, you see. We discovered a very interesting channel. The channel that we discovered is a... How do I describe this? They are a Christian Bible study channel that also occasionally does... Uh, podcasts of um of 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 a uh, 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 political commentary pop culture political commentary from a let's say extremist christian worldview and i got to say it's been very very wild and they've been posting a lot of stuff so we're going to have some options which means uh we're going to we're going to pull up their channel here we're going to look through and see what we can find and we're going to pick one cuz um yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Hold on a second though. I'm having a little bit of difficulty locating their channel. Is this the one? Yes, I found it. Oh yeah, we got it everybody. Here we go. I found it in my watch history. Whoo! Oh, okay. So, here we go. As you can see, this guy's got a lot of a lot of videos up here. We've got some really good ones. We got Oh, he reacted to Joe Biden calling for a new world order. We've got him talking about antichrists. We've got him raging about the Babylon Bee. We have a Christian dad review of Turning Red. Do we want to watch a Christian dad review of Turning Red? Are you all ready? I'm fucking ready. I'm ready to hear a Christian dad's review of Turning Red. Let's do it. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Spencer Smith. I am a Christian dad, and I am here today to review a movie about rebelling against your parents, embracing witchcraft, and doing whatever you want to do with your life despite all warnings of... Com Pog! Fucking poggers! I'm so here for it. That movie sounds based. Let's do it. Let's see where this goes. Common sense and wholesomeness. Basically, what I'm trying to say is we're going to review a new Disney movie. Isn't this like the plot of every single Disney movie out there? Your parents say don't do it, but I'm going to do it. And somehow there's a... Is that the plot of every Disney movie? witch and somehow you know there's cute devils everywhere satan is so sweet isn't he but the one we're going to review today is called Wait a minute which movie has cute devils everywhere which which disney pixar movie has cute devils is there besides fantasia which was like a hundred years ago cinderella hercules oh yeah hercules does but that was also like 30 years ago The Garg, they're not devils. And that was also 30 years ago. Snow White didn't have cute devils. Okay, but this, okay, but now they're, now you're getting broad with the definition of devils. If you count, if you count stuff in Mulan as devils, that doesn't. This isn't fair. Come on, let's go. Called Turning Red. Turning Red is the newest Pixar film that Disney has put out. And it says Disney and Pixar's Turning Red introduces May Lee, a confident, dorky 13 year old torn between staying her mother's dutiful daughter and the chaos of adolescence. Her protective, if not slightly overbearing, mother Ming is never far from her daughter and unfortunately reality for the teenager. And if changes to her interest, relationship, and body weren't enough, whenever she gets too excited, she poofs into a giant red panda during this video i will be giving you my review of this as a christian father and just letting you know what the bible has to say and what the themes of this movie are and there will be spoilers in this video and we will be telling other christian parents what i am so fucking excited you can expect if you choose to watch this movie and before we get into the movie go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and no. we will bring you a lot of good content like this in the very near future let's get into it the opening line of the movie is the idea should we honor our okay Something I gotta hand it to, this guy using the like zoomer editing style of like jumping in and out all the time, just saying, you know, I gotta, I gotta say it, it's not good. It's not entertaining. It's distracting, but at least he's not, at least he's trying to keep hip with the times, you know, at least he's trying to keep up with the times. Our parents or always oh, got bisexual lighting as well. Ooh. Honor ourselves and do these concepts ever conflict? Honor your parents. Honoring your parents sounds great, but if you take it too far, 
Well, you might forget to honor yourself. Now, anybody who knows anything about the True! True! You might forget to take care of yourself if all that you do is live for your parents. That's actually super true. Extremely true. But of course, thankfully, we have Christian dad here to tell you that your children are literally going to be owned, uh, that your children are literally owned by their parents. Let's find out. Is that what he's going to say? Bet it will be. Bible knows that Exodus chapter 20, verse number 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And so we know that is one of the Ten Commandments, which is like one of the core laws of Christianity. Try to honor your mother and your father. But this book strikes at the very heart of that concept, saying that sometimes you can't honor your mother and father. Sometimes you just have to honor yourself. And a lot of people will look at this and say, well, that's... It, it was a movie. So this he said it was a book, but it's a fucking movie. Ding! Ding! So, you know, reasonable concept. But the truth is that is actually a Luciferian concept. What that is is something from Aleister Crowley. Do as thou wilt. Yes! Yes! I told you! Yes! <laughs> Not letting your parents completely run your life and ever having any sense of independence is a Luciferian concept. Pioneered by Eliza Crowley. Yes, let's go. Let's Which fucking we go. In Third Adam, it's the idea that we're not trying to get you to do what God wants you to do, but we're not trying to get you to do what Satan wants you to do. We're just trying to get you to do what you want to do. Which, at the very core, is a Luciferian concept. Okay, so let me explain to you how Satanism and the occult works. It's really not that hard. He's doing a cross promo to his conspiracy documentary. Yes! Uh, but I want to explain it to you here in this video. God gave the ultimatum to mankind in the Garden of Eden saying, you know, if you eat of that tree, thou shalt surely die. It's a 100% done deal. It is, it is an ultimatum. These are the consequences to the rules. Well, Satan comes along and he says the total opposite. You shall not surely die. He, he gives them complete opposite of what God says. Well, you basically, you have two opposite ideas here. And there's no way to reconcile the two. They, it's either one or the other. And so what Satan does is he tempts Eve with hidden knowledge and with freedom from those rules over there. There's a whole other world of knowledge out there that you can have opened up to you if you'll just disobey that. It's dead. Also, by the way, Christians always have the worst understanding of Genesis. There's a great video by by Big Joel where he talks about um, alternative views on the Genesis myth and how the Christian interpretation of it all being about breaking rules is really, really dumb and also isn't is historically illiterate given how the story was talked about by the people who would tell the story. By, you know, by, by the ancient Israelites, by people who, by people who actually believed in these old testament texts before they were the old testament they talked about the story differently it wasn't so much about rule breaking as it was about the awareness of good and evil anyway very silly but keep in mind that notice here that the christian interpretation is hyper fixated on the on satan using freedom to tempt women you see women are tempted by freedom weird how that works definitely not worship god and it's not worship satan so the occult basically is summed up in this Do as thou wilt. It's Varus. Do whatever you want. That 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 was Satan's plan for Eve, and that's what he said. Just just do what you want to do. And listen. I love that I love that whenever like American Christians talk about Satan. He's always like the biggest dumbass. Like he just sounds like like evil Shaggy. They're like, they're like, uh, they're like, yeah, Satan. You see, Satan. He strolled into the Garden of Eden. He was like, hey, Scoob, you want a doobie? Do as thou wilt. Just do whatever you want, man. Satan doesn't care if you worship him or whatever. He just is concerned that you're not obeying God and serving God. So really, just do what you want to do. And if you do what you want to do, ultimately you're doing what he just have fun, wants bro. you to do. In America, Happy to have you, Sprodman. Thank you for the dono. Sensationalized and kind of misunderstood and people associated with worship. 
By the way, showing old footage of Marilyn Manson is a massive boomerism. Nobody has given a shit about Marilyn Manson for like 30 years. This guy is literally trapped in the past. Being the devil and things like that. But it's really a philosophy about uh, true individuality. True killjoy. Preservation. It's about. Uh, you know, being your own God. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. This movie has some very hilarious moments talking about embarrassing your kids and uh, just talking about the boy band culture that is prevalent even today. And there's a lot of good jokes, a lot of good one-liners in there as well. Now, a lot of people have likened this movie as a young lady going through adolescence and her body is changing and things of that nature. There's a lot of jokes about that. But at some point along the movie, she starts to like boys. And she starts drawing a picture of her and a boy embracing. And her mother finds the pictures and goes and confronts the boy as if she had been taken advantage of and embarrasses her completely which causes a strong emotional stir in her heart and she ends up blowing up into this red panda and once she turns so the mom did something really bad and the story is showing you that sometimes parents don't make the right decision and it tries to teach you how to deal with that without just taking bad behavior from the parent i'm i can't wait to see how this guy goes about justifying this as a bad thing turns into a red panda it is revealed to her that her family has actually has some sort of curse upon them where all the women have a spirit of red panda inside of them that was given to them a long time ago so they could protect their village and that at some point when this panda is released inside of them and is awakened inside of them they all need to get together as a family and do a big ritual to capture this panda spirit inside some sort of talisman of some sort so that it does not control their life now from an occultic perspective this is speaking about a familiar spirit now the bible speaks oftentimes about familiar spirits is actually a very common concept there first mentioned in leviticus 1931 uh, regard not them that have familiar spirits need their seek after wizards to be defiled by them i am the lord your god now for you to understand this and to make the connection to this movie the root word of the word familiar is family and this is a generational spirit as defined by the <laughs> occult. So uh, they, they say like, you know, if you have the familiar spirit of alcoholism, then that is a generational thing. And <laughs> what? If you, if you have the familiar spirit of alcoholism, wait a second. Can I hear that back again? What? Generational spirit as defined by the occult. So uh, they, they say like, you know, if you have the familiar spirit of alcoholism, then that is a generational thing. And the familiar spirit is a family spirit, which lines up exactly with what this movie is teaching about. Our family has this spirit of a red panda that comes out and attacks people. And we have to harness the this demon in some sort of talisman so that it doesn't destroy everybody. And it is revealed to the daughter that she has to have some sort of ritual done so that she that. can separate from the panda spirit. You already said this. You already said this. You're repeating yourself. You just said this part. You're summarizing the plot again, but you just said that on the 25th which was the red moon the problem is is that she is working and saving money to go to a concert of a boy band but they get the date wrong and turns out that the the moon turns red on the same date of the concert so she's torn between going to the concert or going and having this ritual done so that she can have this panda spirit separated from her and then her grandmother and all these aunts show up and it turns out that all of them have had this same experience it is a generational thing for women and that her even her own mother had to go through this ritual to separate the red Panda. It's about family, family, family from her. So they come together, they all do the big ritual, and the funny thing is, is that there there really is serious Eastern occultism being shown all throughout this movie. Uh, there is a Oh. I'm I'm sorry. Are you mad that the movie about an Asian family doesn't have enough Christianity in it? I feel like that's unfair even as a Christian reviewer. Like, even as a Christian reviewer, it feels unfair to like, if you watched like a, like a, like a, like a Kung Fu movie or a wuxia film, would you get mad that there was like depictions of that country's religion in it? I guess so. 
circle of chalk being drawn, which anybody knows anything about the cult, that is either either they use chalk in a circle or they use salt in a circle, and they perform their rituals that creates a portal right at the very middle, and uh, and that that just opens the door to something to a spirit world, and so basically they start singing, they start chanting, and the young girl is taking up into some out of body experience, which is an astral projection, and after she projects into this bamboo forest across the universe somewhere, she's met with a female spirit i love how he says that like it's the aha moment <gasps> a female spirit a female spirit no does any of that sound familiar to you you see in third adam three rise of the divine feminine we talked about how that all occult he's pitching his he's pitching his conspiracy thing again we got to watch this he's pitching the conspiracy video is somehow tied to a female spirit and it all it all goes that way they worship the divine feminine and so this spirit woman gives this this girl a portal to walk through that she can go through the ritual and separate from the panda spirit but she decides that she does not want to do so and what she does is she actually decides that she's going to rebel against her parents and embrace this demon and do whatever she wants with her life now first samuel 15 23 says based we're big fans of demons. She embraces the demon, the woman demon, the female demon. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And so we learn there that rebellion and witchcraft go hand in hand, which is... This is what all Christians do, by the way. Christians love to pick... To pick uh uh verses out of context to just grab random fucking verses rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the lord he hath also rejected thee from being king this is specifically talking about a king in the old testament saying that rebellion for a king and stubbornness for a king is bad not for a fucking kid what exactly these people are doing here in this Disney movie. She is rebelling by embracing the... D Lady Hopium says, I grew up having that, that verse specifically shouted at me constantly. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, stupid shit like this gets constantly fucking dragged out. Even though this is specifically talking about a king demon spirit that she has inside of her but then again this is a disney movie and that's basically what all of them are about reject oh. what your parents say reject what's right go hey guys do you guys remember aladdin wasn't was aladdin i love the part in aladdin where where aladdin told his parents um to to fuck off do you guys remember that part oh wait a minute sorry not aladdin he's an orphan wait maybe it was in hercules the movie where in Hercules, he r really worked extremely hard to build up a relationship with his parents, both the ones on Earth and the ones in the sky. That's a bit weird. Okay, 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 let's try again. Um, what about the Lion King? Oh, yeah, Simba. Simba had a really big fight with his dad, right? That's what he was known for. Oh, yeah, that's right. I love that part. The part where they're fighting and he rebels and then he rebels so rebelliously that his uncle kills his dad. Remember that? Let's see. What about another one? Um. What about... Hmm. Hmm. Well, Tangled, that one does have one. See, Tangled is a problematic film. See, Tangled is a movie about an abusive mother that literally keeps her daughter imprisoned and doesn't let her daughter cut her hair. But, I mean, that's an inconvenient one to bring up, isn't it? Oh, yeah, what about Lilo and Stitch? Lilo and Stitch, a movie about two orphans finding a sense of family by working together and overcoming their differences. Damn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, do, are we remembering, what about The Hunchback of Notre Dame? My favorite part in The Hunchback of Notre Dame is the part where Quasimodo fights with his parents. Remember the the orphan hunchback who lives up in the top of the castle? Remember when he fought with his parents? I love that. I love that movie. Incredible. 
He's right. This Christian guy is so right on all of the facts. Christians, as we know, the type of people who de generally have a great grasp on facts. Go off in the woods and be some sort of witch. You guys need new material, y'all. This is getting old. You run the same script over and over and over and over again, and it, it's it's kind of dumb. But of course, this is Disney, and Disney's going to do what Disney do. And so after she rebels, her mother gets angry and actually falls and breaks her own pendant, and her panda spirit is released, and her she ends up being like some red panda Godzilla and goes and attacks the concert, and basically they release all their panda spirits so that they can try to uh, reverse this process of capturing, recapturing. Wait, this movie Disney. sounds sick! A giant red panda battle? That sounds fucking sick! Red panda spirits, and uh, and then at the end of the day, all of them take their panda spirits back and capture them back, except the young lady. She decides, you know what, I'm going to keep my demon panda spirit, and I'm going to live this way. This is what I'm going to be, and uh, awesome. nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to go against the wisdom of my parents. And basically that... Yeah, because her parent was clearly wrong. Her... Even in this guy's review, it's so obvious. The mother literally accused a random kid of harming her daughter because her daughter drew a picture of him and then the mom destroyed an entire concert that her daughter was afraid of that her or sorry that her daughter was excited for because her daughter didn't listen to her yeah holy fuck yeah wait a minute her parents are occultists why is he siding with the occultists That's the theme of the movie. Uh, guys, I'm so, getting the feel guys, I'm getting the feeling this Christian reviewer doesn't know what he's talking about. What is the th what is the problem here? Why should Christians have hang-ups or hesitations about movies like this? Well, number one, because it teaches rebellion against authority. You know, this this whole idea, there's a little, lot of different ways it could be translated, but basically this young 13-year-old girl basically tells her mom and dad, I'm going to do whatever I stink and want to do, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. This is my choice, my body, my choice. Okay, guys, this is the most awkward shit in the world, and it's something that is surprisingly common. Those of you who grew up in Christian households probably know exactly what I'm talking about, specifically American Christian households. It's the creepy pastor doing an impression of a young female character. Listen to his voice be translated but basically this young 13 year old girl basically tells her mom and dad i'm going to do whatever i stink and want to do and there ain't nothing you can do about it this is my choice my body my choice and uh which is exactly a line in the movie going out like that are you <sighs> my panda my choice mom she goes off and makes permanent decisions about herself. Does any of this sound familiar to you? It should, because this is the social justice issues of the day. And not only that, there is like a ton of witchcraft in this movie. I mean, this thing is out of control, off the charts. Red demons and all kinds of crazy stuff like that everywhere in this movie. Quite frankly, this movie was rated PG, but I think it probably needed a PG-13. Just my opinion, but of course that's subjective and whatever. But of course, there is some very dark imagery uh, there's some somewhat scary imagery in this movie and it is spun in scary. such a way so that these spirits that what did he get scared of kind of overtake you can be fun and exciting and happy this is a glorious thing to have this demon spirit come and take over your body and embrace it and work with it and live with it and have it and just reject what your parents say about it this is you man this is the what this is the life you want this is Face. a lot of fun you can have this if you embrace that spirit now, in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, it talks about the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. But the parents were wrong. It's adultery, fornication, unclean. Yeah, he just, he just hates women having a choice. By the way, he fixates... We've seen some of his stuff before. You'll see. He, he fucking fixates on, on, on women. This dude is like the turbo misogynist. It's so fucking wild. This is why we need to do this from time to time, by the way, because it reminds us of, of the other people we have to deal with on the Internet. This lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. And it talks about witchcraft being one of the works of the flesh. So God is not leading you into doing something like this, and God does not expect you to do witchcraft. And if you do, hey, you buddy, there's another one on there. Hatred. Hatred. That's another interesting one. Do you think you're engaging in some hatred here, maybe?
Maybe you engage in some homophobic hatred that we've seen you do before. That's one of the works of the flesh. Oh, you only care about the ones women do. Or not being spiritual. So the question needs to be asked, is this something that Christian people should watch? Well, I guess maybe a different question would be, could you watch this? Of course, you can watch this. There are a lot of things you could do. But should you watch this? Well, as a Christian father, I'm just going to tell you, my family is going to pass on this one. Uh, I just don't like the idea that my children are being taught that you can rebel against authority, that you can go off and... Who saw that one coming? And, and reject everything that your parents have taught you. Who saw and that one everything coming, guys? Will turn out okay, because the truth is, God gives children parents for their protection and for their good. And for this movie, remember what I said about the ownership thing. God gave kids parents because parents will always protect. Literally, the sort of thing that allows children to be abused. I'm not kidding you. Saying that parents are always in the right and that children are always being rebellious, building up a culture that looks like that is literally what allows abuse to flourish. Do you think that abuse didn't flourish when kids were when kids were told they had to always obey their dad even when their dad beats them with a belt, even when their dad calls them names? No. This shit is so fucked to portray in the minds of young people that you can rebel against everything that is right and good and every authority figure in your life and you can go off and embrace some demon spirit and everything will turn out fine and happy and there'll be a happy ending there. Uh, I think that is misleading. I think that is a dangerous presupposition to give to kids and I think ultimately that will send some kids down the wrong road. This is not a Christian or good or godly thing for them to learn. Truth be told, every Christian kid who rebels against their parents, who rebels against their church, who rebels against against the Bible goes down a very dark and ugly road and although some of them can be reclaimed off that road after a period of time usually the problem is is that most of them do not have a happy ending many of them if you rebel against your parents you will die you will have a bad ending and you will never come back and if you let your children rebel this okay guys I'm not kidding you I'm not even being a small bit hyperbolic here. The idea that if your children ever disobey you, that they will forever be tainted and that they will die is what leads parents to feel like they're justified in hitting their kids. If your continual, if your worldview says that children who disobey become corrupted and die young, then you will then in people's minds, they will conclude that it's okay to do anything anything to prevent that from happening oh it's funny sly torn says and again i ask what if your parents aren't christian or on the right this dude could not answer this it's so fucking dumb they would change their answer christians do not care about consistency they only care about advancing their worldview they have never cared about consistency if it was christian parents they would be if it was if it was a kid depicted as rebelling against non-christian parents something that appears in the like god is not dead movies that's actually like a theme in the first one especially is kids disobeying their non-Christian parents, they would clap for it. They would be like, this is so good. This is so good because they don't care. What they care about is you admitting that God is good and that you should be a Christian. That's all they care about. It, this is one of the things that you will find out about zealous, uh, 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 zealous fundamentalist Christians. They do not care about consistency. They do not care about honesty. They care about advancing their internal perception of God's will. And they will do anything to make that happen. Them have a very sad ending. I want to tell you kids this. Your mother and father were given to you by the Lord, and they were given to you for your protection, for your guidance, and for you at 13 years old to decide that I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm a grown adult now. Proves how completely ridiculously foolish you are, and you need parents. Trust me, you need your mom and dad. But you see, Disney has a long history of teaching this to their kids. I mean, that's what... Oh, yeah, I forgot. At the end of this movie, she murders her parents. Do you guys remember? That was the best ending ever. At the end of this movie, she murders her parents. That's why, that's why she doesn't have parents anymore. And then Disney goes, this, vi this movie... Uh, this this movie is approved by De by Disney. We approve at Disney of murdering your parents. Frozen was about. I'm just going to let it go and do whatever I want. Nobody's going to tell. Oh, yeah. Frozen. She was like, let it go. Let it go. Let 
go of the rope that your parents are hanging off of. It's a noose. They will die. I hate my parents. Yeah. Tell me what to do anymore. This, at the end of the day, is rebellion. And the Bible likens rebellion unto witchcraft. Rebellion. And oftentimes when somebody is rebelling, they end up somewhere in the world of witchcraft. And this is not good. This is not. Whenever your children don't listen to you, they will become a witch godly and i think feminism is a is a manifestation of this not only that that's what these people are saying <laughs> yes oh i fucking we i missed this content imps i missed us finding crazy christians to react to oh the hogs i missed laughing at the hogs based fucking hell yeah brother become a lesbian and practice witchcraft do it. Why are so many of the letters here orange and then there's a rainbow in there? Did he change this? I didn't say it. They said it. That's what they believe. So I went ahead and watched this movie for you and uh, just so you didn't have to give you a heads up on what this is. But guys, I'm going to tell you, this thing is not something that I think has lessons in it that I want to instill in my family. I want my kids to know that sin is ugly, that, that rebelling against authority is an ugly thing, rebelling against what's right, sneaking around on your parents and, and going behind their back and doing secret things uh, without their... Hey, what about, what about parents mistreating their kids? Do you think that's an ugly thing? No, you don't care, do you? Their approval. Guys, no joke. I would be willing to bet money that this guy is a bat is a is a dangerous father. I would be willing to bet money. I have no evidence of this. This is purely a character assassination, but I would personally be willing to bet money that this guy is a absolute bitch to his kids. It is a dangerous concept and you should not be doing these things. This is horrible, awful, and it will cost you severely like this will ruin you like i said the, the wait watching wait can we go back through that dangerous concept and you should not be doing these things this is horrible awful and it will cost you severely like this will disobeying your parents ever will cost you severe, severely incredible ruin you like i said the the movie is very misleading in that it gives a very happy ending to this young lady who decided to embrace a demon and reject her parents counsel and wishes uh it gives a very happy ending but the truth is if you go this way there won't be a happy ending it'll be a very dark ugly ending and that's why the bible says so much about the guidance of your parents listening to the wisdom of your fathers and uh, lining up with spiritual authority in your life and if you do so then you notice that he said he said there at the end the wisdom of your father it's a bit, bit of a bit of a little self-report there huh have boom, 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 boom. well that's all for today with this movie i would say thumbs down no way uh -uh. not not as a christian father i will not let my kids watch this you may think that i'm just some you know fuddy duddy ned flanders type guy but the truth be told Correct. i'm trying to raise a family for god no over. ned flanders is 10 times the man you are here trying to do the best i can uh, to teach my kids the right lessons and this movie from disney pixar does not help me in that cause we're going to pass on this one guys if you're new subscribe to this channel shut the fuck up if you skip the if you can skip the credits i can skip the credits